Things I have never done in the name of beauty. Stay tuned. Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's YouTube shorty video, I want to talk about the things that I have never done in the name of beauty. So the first thing I'll talk about is hair. Having my hair professionally colored. I have never done that. Now I color my hair, but I color it myself. I just buy the boxed color at the drugstore and about every five to six weeks I color it. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting your hair professionally colored. I just never did it. In a way, I think it would be nice to try it because I know they can do a much better job than I can and they can put more dimension in. It's not like all one color. You know, they can make your roots darker, put highlights or different tones and things like that, which I think would be really pretty. But you know, once you start that, you're going to have to keep doing it. You're not going to want to go back to just boxed color. And that's just money that I don't choose to spend. I don't want to get into that because then I'll be doing it every six weeks. And I've gotten along so far for 72 years like this and coloring my own. So I'm just going to stick with that. Number two would be having my teeth professionally whitened and or capped. I know many people get their teeth capped when they get older and they get them professionally whitened at the dental office and I mean they are shiny bright white like piano keys. I have never done that and I don't plan to do that. Now I do whiten my own teeth I use the Opal Essence Teeth Whitener. It's like a gel. I get it from Amazon. People use Crest White Strips, things like that. But never had it done professionally. The next thing is eyebrows and eyelashes. I have never had anything done to my eyebrows. I've never had them plucked, waxed, tweezed, tinted, tattooed, and whatever else you can do with eyebrows, even shaping them. Never once have I ever had that done. Now, I pluck my own eyebrows. If there's a stray hair here and there, I'll pluck those. But that's it. I don't wax them or shape them or I don't do anything with my eyebrows. Another thing I have never done in the name of beauty is have my face uh, lifted, any surgical face lift, plumped, filled, and all that stuff. Um, you know how people will get their lips done and they plump them up and they, I mean, they really plump them up or put something in there to make their lips fuller. I don't do that. I've never done that. People will get uh, something done above their lips. It makes a border. I think they call it vermilion border or something like that. That just kind of lifts your lip up and makes that border more noticeable. Well, obviously you can tell I've never had that done. I have thin lips and they get thinner as I age. But I'm not interested in that. I don't want any of that stuff done. And as far as like Botox goes, no, no to that also. Maybe I would have considered it when I was younger, but I never knew about any of this stuff until I was 68 years old and started watching YouTube. I led a very sheltered life and I just... I didn't know anybody that had this stuff done until I got on YouTube. Well, it's really, it's too late. Way too late for me. 
I'm 72 years old. From what I understand, if you get Botox, it's best to get that before static wrinkles appear because it will stop them from appearing. There are two kinds of wrinkles, static and dynamic. Dynamic wrinkles are the ones that come from our facial expressions. You don't see the wrinkle when your face is at rest, but if you smile, all the crow's feet, you know, you can see the wrinkles. If you frown, then you can see the 11s and the wrinkles here and here. Those are dynamic wrinkles. And if you get Botox and you have dynamic wrinkles, then when you smile and squint and do those things, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see those forehead lines when you move your eyebrows. When you have static wrinkles like I have, those are permanent. They are permanently etched in the skin. And even when your face is at rest, those wrinkles are prominent. You can see them. Now, you might not be able to see them on camera. I'm sitting in front of a window with light. But your crow's feet, the 11s, the lines around your mouth, the wrinkles on the sides of your mouth, they're there constantly. You can have a complete poker face and you're going to see them. And then if you make an expression like smile or squint, they just get even deeper. So that's what I have, the static wrinkles. And nothing's going to change that. If they put Botox in, uh, there's, the wrinkles would still be there. They wouldn't show up more when I frowned like this. But you would still see them. They're etched in my skin. So, because of being late to the game, and I don't know if I ever would have done it anyhow if I knew about it, but that's something I have never done. Now, I'm going to get closer. Let me zoom in a little closer. I hope you can see my 11s. I know they show up in my videos because I can see them. My crow's feet, I'll turn to the side. They're there. I don't have to make an expression at all. And they're there. And the same on this side. Now, if I squint, they're even worse. And here's the crow's feet when I'm smiling. So, they just get even deeper. But they're there permanently with or without making a facial expression. So, no, I'm not interested in anything like that, and it wouldn't work on my kind of wrinkles. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, and you people will probably think, she is really a weirdo. <laughs> she has really uh, just, I don't know, lived under a rock for most of her life. I have never had a pedicure in my life. Never. I did have one manicure 19 years ago when my middle son got married. I went and got my fingernails polished. Not my toes, just my fingernails. That was the only time I had a manicure. That was my one and only one. And I never had a pedicure. Now, let me say, I would like to have one. I'm not against it. I think it would feel great. I've always kind of been leery about it. You know, I know they use tools and they like trim your skin. And I don't know what all they do, but I don't know. I just never felt right about it. But if somebody would go with me, I think I could do it. And hopefully, someday, and hopefully in the future, near future, I'll be able to do that with my friend Linda from Mature Sass. I'd go with her, and then that way I couldn't back out of it. 
So even though I have never had one done in my life, that is something that I would at least like to try. So let me know in the comments section, what do you like to have done? Or is there anything that I don't do that you don't like to do either? I think it's fun to get everybody's perspective on it. We all have different things that matter to us or are more convenient for us. We do different things at different ages. So somebody that's only 60 may feel a totally different way about one of these things I talked about than somebody in their 70s like I am. But anyhow, just share in the comments section if you would. Well, now I'm going to leave you with an inside beauty tip. For my inside beauty tip today, I want to read a poem. And I have it in a frame that hangs in our home. It's called The Broken Chain. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life we loved you dearly, in death we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. That's very special to me. Uh, most of you that have been here for a while or those of you that are new would know this, but I lost my ma this year in January. And it's just been such a painful journey. Very painful. Grief is really difficult and a, and a hard road to walk down. And I know many of you have already, or you will in the future. And we will continue to have to walk down that road of grief. I don't know, I guess because I was my ma's caregiver and with her every single day, it just has really hit me hard. And so I read this poem and the part that I hold on to is that someday we will be linked again. That family chain that has been broken will be linked again. Just knowing that brings me comfort and it brings me peace. Because as believers, we know we will see our loved ones again. I am separated from my ma now since January. But I know, I know I will see her again and be linked with her again, along with my dad. And I know many of you out there have lost your parents. You've lost children. You've lost spouses and friends. Imagine, imagine the day when we're going to see them again. Isn't that amazing? So, for those of you who believe, when your chain gets broken and you lose someone, just know that you'll be linked again. You'll be together again. And that gives me so much hope and joy. And I know it would you too. I thank you so much for being here today. I truly do appreciate it. And until we meet again, this is the old girl signing out. See ya!